And away we go. It is the nightcap. Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken right here on BearcatJournal.com. Make sure you visit www.galacticfriedchicken.com. Download the app for Android, iPhone, everything galactic. Get down to in Kentucky. Tell them to pump it up. Save yourself 15% off of your order. Or get on the app. Have them deliver pretty much everywhere inside the 275 loop. And uh, they will bring the galactic goodness right to your front door. All right, we're like we're 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 getting to a point here, Aaron, where every day is going to be labeled something. Good, good. It makes it way easier than trying to find something. Three keys Thursday is like where it. we're at now. Tuesdays are talking about talking. Talking about talking. <laughs> That might be one of my finer moments. <laughs> that is. It's a great one. Talking about talking. Uh, you know, and then Saturdays, we recap the game. Yeah. Sundays, your favorite thing, the AAC recap. Kill me now. AAC, hashtag AAC23 is uh, kind of a trending thing. I think it was trending nationally earlier. Uh, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> you're, it looked like your soul almost crushed a little bit. It started to leave my body. <laughs> All right, big one coming up on uh, on Saturday in Orlando I'll against there. Orlando Tech. Aaron will be there. Brent will be there. My flight leaves at 6 a.m. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. I have to leave here by th- no later than 3.30. You have to leave your house in like 15 minutes. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> So that, that I guess that means I have to produce Rocket Truth tonight. I, I thought maybe having the actual press conference as content down there, uploading right after was you know good. Having you know photos from the field before and after the game. Yeah. Good opportunities for content. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be sitting here tonight. Anyway, whether I. I'll be sitting here watching Rock of Truth, whether I'm producing Rock of Truth or not. So, so, not a big deal. All right, let's get to Aaron's three keys to taking down the Citronauts of Orlando Technical Institute. I think they should go back to Golden Knights. Just bring back the Golden. Uh, Aaron's three key points. Number one, get after John Rice Plumley, specifically breaking through the line. If you can penetrate through that line with the defensive line, with the linebackers, throwing different blitz packages, whether he wants to run or not, you're going to limit John Rice Plumley because I don't think he's fast enough. I don't think he's smart enough. If you continue to decimate the offensive line as this wrecking ball of a defensive front has done all season long, then you're going to contain John Rice Plumley. I have something a little similar, but not quite I had a feeling I don't that, I had a feeling that all of our points were probably going to be fairly similar on this one. The the thing I would say is I, I don't like the idea of like aggressively blitzing him because when you're and I know that's not necessarily what you're saying. Correct. Um you know, when you're sending five and six and all he has to do is escape to a little bit of space and turn that into a lot of green grass, um, you do need to contain him a little bit, but you it, I, win your individual matchups is what I think you're, what you're getting at. It's, I mean, absolutely. As again, the defensive line has done more so than anybody, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see I, you'd be, you'd be foolish not to send Ivan on more than one occasion. They send Ivan on every snap. So (laughs) that's just Uh, what he does. So, uh, but, but that's, I I think that will also help to contain the pass. Um, Not just, not just the run, but it's just going to limit him on, on both sides of of the offensive ball. I I guess. I don't know how else he's (laughs) running and passing. Uh, Number two, get back to clean football especially in regard to penalties and third down. They were clean on third down against SMU. I I haven't seen a game where they've done both. Can we do both? Can we do both? I don't think that's a crazy ask. It's asking a lot. We had two <laughs> weeks ago, we, we cleaned up penalties, 
or two games third ago. Third down, yeah, third cleaned down up penalties. Disaster. Third down was terrible. Last week we cleaned up third down. Penalties were the worst they'd ever been. I don't know why it's got to mm-hmm. always be the scales can never be any closer than than just it. None of it makes sense. Help it make sense. Show me that you can do it because I think that it's going to be it's going to be raucous. You're going to have penalties. I think regardless. Um, just I think there's going to be some pre-snap stuff that you're going to see just because it's the bounce house because it's a big game. Um, so I, I guess I just want it's going to be a tough environment, and I, I just want them to play as clean as they can to get out of there with the with the win. Okay. And my third point: continue to find chunk plays with or without Tyler Scott. Even this week, I think I'll acquiesce to the 15-yard chunk play. Oh, okay, okay. That's good to hear. It's good to know. Just this week, though. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I don't I don't feel like – I guess this offense is just always always playing at their best when they have their foot on the gas and they're trying to hit, hit 120. They're trying to beat the GPS, right? They, they want to get there before the other analogy. team. It's a good so analogy. I, I just – I want to see them not let up, not – I also don't want them forcing things, but I guess what I've seen so far out of the offensive playbook has been all over the place. So I'm not really sure if you're going to see um, dinking and dunking, if you're going to see throwing something up for a Josh Wiley jump ball. Uh, but I, I don't want to see. To your point, you know how you avoid problems in the red zone? You score from like 30 yards out, 40 <laughs> yards out. 50 yards out like you know yeah if you're if you're if you're popping in touchdowns from uh well beyond red zone or red zone plus then you don't have to worry about stalling out in the red zone so those those are the three points i came up with for this week and again i won't be surprised if they're eerily similar as we Um, get close to halloween not a ton of overlap really no um Seeing red, red zone. Offense and defense. It's got to be better. It, okay. It's got to be more consistent. And I think everybody's so hypersensitive about the offense right now. They're not paying attention to the fact that this red do- red zone defense has not been good. Well, and I would imagine with John Rice Plumley, that's probably where he's at his best is in the red zone where you have a short right. field to work with. And if, you, if the pass isn't there, you just take off. Yeah. They have got to, got to get seven when they're down there in, in Central Florida's end, and you've got to at least hold Central Florida to three uh, as often as possible because playing on the road, I, I think one of the other keys, and, and Dave talked about Central Florida really struggles in the first quarter. You know there's going to be a lot of hype in that building right away. You've got to withstand that emotional surge. And a lot of the ways you do that, and one of the reasons they've been able to beat Central Florida over the past three years, stop them, hold them to three when they get close, and when you get close, put the ball in the end zone. Number two, turnover battle. I think that's one thing about John Rice Plumlee. He will give you the ball. Sure. And and this has not been a splashy defense yet to this point. Um, And then offensively, you got to take care of it. You can't have silly fumbles. And one of your favorite stats, uh, UCF has forced six fumbles on the season. They've recovered five. So the ball is bouncing their way in that regard. There you go. So you've got to be plus one, plus two. You cannot try to fight out of a a turnover hole going in there and, and trying to win that game. And then number three for me, hold the edge. We don't know the status of Jabari Taylor. He wasn't practicing on Tuesday. If you're trying to stop that rushing attack without, we know Malik Bana is gone. If Jabari Taylor is not available on the other side, you're relying on a lot of youth, a lot of inexperience on the edge to try to corral a really aggressive RPO attack where you've got to read the ball, read the quarterback, and – Plumley is fast enough. If you're half a second late, or if you take one false step, 
thinking that they that he handed it off and he pulled it. Right. He gets around you. You can be in a hell of a lot of trouble. Like holding that edge defensively from the end spot with or without Jabari Taylor is going to really dictate how they're able to limit Central Florida on first and second down, right? And if you can get them in third and long, third and seven, third and eight, and you force them to throw the ball on third down, that plays into what Cincinnati wants to do. If they're third and three, they can still run RPO. They can still they can still do the read option stuff. Um, so I think that is critical. We know Briggs and Corleone are going to get penetration at the point of attack. Absolutely. But what they're doing on the edge, with or without Jabari, I think is uh, one of the primary factors for this game. Is there an update to what they think his status is going to be yet? I mean, it's going to depend on how it feels leading up to the game. Game time decision. Well, and they're not going to. Right. I, what I know is he didn't practice Tuesday. I was there. That's what I saw. That makes me think at best it's going to be something that it's, I mean, it's a hamstring, you know, soft tissue injuries, which they have been phenomenal at, at avoiding. Right. right. Um, that's a soft tissue injury for a defensive end is so weird. So weird, but that's. I mean, I guess we'll find out whether he's uh, he's out there with the boys at two thirty when they start warming up, and if he's not, it puts a lot of pressure on your defensive line. That's been really good, even without Malik, without Malik and Jabari. That's a great challenge, as Butch Jones would once say. So what's what's your gut tell you? How you feeling? Or do you not want to do any of that before we drop the preview article tomorrow? Um, over. I mean, it's weird. It's like Dave said last night. I've never had my emotions swing as much as they did from four yeah. o'clock Saturday, where I felt, and then ten o'clock Saturday night <clears throat> after you see I've got discarded by ECU. It, it will be very interesting to see how that how that UCF team responds. Um, you know, that you're either going to come out like a ball of fire or you're going to come out and things are going to start going the other way and you have to find out, you know, how invested are you in making this a, a winning season, you know, or and keeping it on the rails. We know emotions are going to be running high, especially for UCF, as it is their homecoming. Again, for the second week in a row, the Cincinnati plays visitor to a homecoming. Uh, well, I think I, this one makes I, more sense for the reason I brought up last week, just that you give them your best shot. You have the most people there. You got kids begging for <laughs> guys to – kids begging for fans to show up and fill the stands <laughs> on social media. They want this one bad. This is also like we, we saw last year, they went through that little stretch right around this point in the season where they lost three of four and that kind of, you know, derailed what they, what they were, what they were trying to accomplish as a season. So, you know, let's see what I, they're made of. I can't believe people are already calling for John Rice Plumley's head. I mean, it's the, the people are calling for Ben Bryant's head. Like, one snap into the season. Ben's also never hung up 70. He's hung up a lot of points. I get it. I'm just saying, is this you're like two weeks removed from hanging up 70? Yeah, it's college football. People are crazy. This fan base is ready to run Gino off the rails. <laughs> Gino fucking Gaduli. <laughs> One of like the five greatest players in program history, <clears throat> his eighth game into being an offensive coordinator. And they've already turned on him. That's college football in 2022, brother. Faster than the Reds with Tony Perez. You're out. <laughs> I just got to the plate. He's only thrown two pitches. You've been you've been designated for assignment. I can't believe they, they dismissed him that fast. Anyway. Yeah. That's neither here nor there. All right, have a safe trip. We will see you uh, back here on Saturday. He's Aaron Smith. I'm Chad Brendel. This is the Nightcap. 
Brought to you by Galactic Fried Chicken on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!